coming out, guys. That's what I've got so far. I've got two lines in. or about a line and a half at the moment. This one is going up to the roof area. They're having issues with their dryer. Uh, not obviously working to its full potential. But as you can see, that is why. There was actually some random stuff that's in these clumps um, that might have helped hold this together, causing it to compact a little easier. So, not sure how it got in there, or if like birds dropped some seeds in the top there, because there's actually a couple seeds. So there's one of them. Um, so I'm not sure. You know, the person here chews chews on seeds and. Um, just happened to leave some in his pocket or something by accident, but that's what I got coming out so far. So I'm going to keep going on this, and then I got, as you can hear, my vacuum right here. So I, again, I do this so I can see if there is a need for dryer vent cleaning. Um, if it hasn't been done in multiple years, naturally it's probably going to need it regardless. But if they just bought the house and had no idea about when the last time it was done, then I like to scrub a little bit and see if anything drops out because um, it may already be clean for all we know or you know hardly got used and there was barely anything in it so I always like to check and see where it's at so I know how bad it is so I can tell the customer if it is an issue with their dryer vent or if it's an issue with their dryer so after I'm done with the dryer vent I'm going to send my line in here Let's see if we can take a look in there. So, I send my line in there to try and clean it out a little bit if possible. So, this one goes directly to the left here. And see, random things get make their way in here. And this could easily block a lot of stuff. It gets compacted and stuck in between this. It can really block the things up and cause issues in the future. So, stuff to keep in mind. Always check your lint trap. Clean it out as often as possible after every load. And that will help uh, minimize the buildup like this. And, obviously, the the one thing that we, nobody wants is to have a potential house fire because this got compacted so much and it poses a, a threat to the home. So depending on your overall use, you want to consider maybe one to two years. If you got a lot of use out of it, you know, multiple people in the house, lots of laundry, you might want to be within that year or two range uh, just to be safe. And then everybody else probably around two, maybe three years. Again, depends on the amount of laundry you do and how the uh, laundry chute goes out. If it goes in like this and then right up, then it's going to probably compact and get dirty a little bit faster. But if it just goes right out the side here, then probably not as often because the chute is a lot shorter. And if for it to go to the left or to the right, it's a lot easier for it than to go straight up like most of these houses where I'm at. So those are just a few tidbits. Hopefully this helps you determine whether you need yours cleaned. And if so, and you are in the 209 area code, feel free to give Black Diamond a call. We'd love to earn your business. Thank you so much for watching. That's it for this part.
got everything out. Oh, hold on. There we go. All good now. That's the issue with these right here. Goes in and then up. So it gets blocked right here and it constricts all your airflow at one point. And then you're stuck with your dryer not doing the job it's supposed to do. And that's usually the case. So there you have it guys. Another dryer vent clean, so I'm going to finish up the job here, and then that'll be it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. All right, BDS crew. Tile with the CRV. Brand new client. Thank you for choosing Black Diamond Services for your tile cleaning needs. While I'm hooked up, after I'm done cleaning their tile surfaces, I am going to be doing a test clean on their carpet. And the reason why I'm doing a test clean is because they're not ready to change the carpet out quite yet. So they want to see if I'm able to make it look better so they can hold off a little longer than they originally want to plan. So I'm going to test clean a section since I'm already here doing the tile. I already got my CRB out. I already got my steam line and vacuum line out to clean this. So it's already a setup situation to where I can help them out and see if I can save them a bunch of money. Because if this carpet can look a lot better, they got a quote for a different floor that was like $4,500 or more, they said, somewhere around there, for about 600 square feet. They were gonna do something else besides carpet. Obviously, 4,500 plus is a lot, to, a lot to swallow, so if I can make their carpet last a year or two more so they can better plan for it, I think that's a win-win, right? So I'm gonna do my best to see what I can do for this carpet. I did find multiple P spots here and there. Not big ones, but just multiple spots. So they are aware of that when I came out originally and did the estimate. So I will be addressing an area that has a few. And if I can get it to look presentable and not smell in the process, then I'm gonna save them about $4,500, right? And then they can use that for something else and worry about the carpet down the line, even if they plan to stay here for that long. So I'm all about trying to figure out some solutions for people that don't have 4,500 plus to spend on a little bit of flooring or would rather not. So when I measured out the total square footage of the areas, traffic areas, and all that to be cleaned, if I use that $4,500 uh, general estimate of what they got for new floors, in the end, I'll be saving them about 4250 ish So I think that's quite a difference for this scenario. So that's my goal, is to get it looking good so they don't have to bother with that. Then maybe instead they could put some of that towards a nice family trip or something. Do something that will make memories. Not have to worry about a headache of moving everything out to uh, get new floors put in when they, don't, when they don't really even want to. So, and that's just the, he said that was just the, uh, the total 
for uh, new floors. That wasn't including if they needed them to move everything out, from my understanding. So, I know to, to move a house to a new location, it's usually an extra three thousand dollars depending on how big the house and how much stuff you have so you know they're if they're not able to do the moving themselves they're gonna be looking at you know eight thousand dollars roughly by the time you're done so when you got clients that are on the fence with certain things, ask them questions, get an idea of what they want and what they feel would be best for them. You know, this option doesn't have to be for everybody. If you're ready to change your carpet out, by all means, that's what you wanna do. Don't let anybody stop you. But if you're not wanting to go put that expense into it and you just want it to be nice you know a lot of times as long as it's not worn way too far out you can make it look good so that's the idea here let's get them clean so I'm gonna be cleaning the carpet right next to this tile um, and a little bit over here so that way I could see what I could do for them but as I can see just the grout master and my, my CRB is pretty much taking care of this tile so this should clean up well considering I technically don't have to scrub it but I figured I'd give it a little scrub and have a little chat with you guys to get a low down on the situation here and what I'm trying to accomplish for them to save them a lot of money that's the idea guys if you can present a solution for somebody's problem you'll probably win 9 out of 10 of those jobs that's what it's about that's what you're there for in the first place is to present a solution for their problem so always look for those those solutions through little tidbits of information that your clients will give you. Because that, at the end of the day, is going to create a client for life, or the life of their time in your area they don't move and whatnot. So same house, I did the dryer vent here. Dryer vent, tile, and of course, a test clean on the carpet. Then once I'm done, I'm going to send him a photo of the section I did so I can get the green light to finish up and do the rest of the carpet. So it's this living room. There's a hallway, a bedroom over to the left, and then going down the hallway to the master bedroom. So a pretty decent job. You know, if I add that carpet on, it'll be a great job. And it'll be even more satisfying because I earned that extra bit. So that's, there's so much more, more in it when you earn that 
and you feel so much better about yourself when you gain that little extra. I think that's I think that's why people that work so hard and make themselves into the best they could be and always be looking for opportunities to, to grow, I think that's those are the type of people that are probably the happiest when you find something you love to do and you make somebody else happy in, uh, in connection to that. So it'd be the same thing if I was out playing music, if I haven't mentioned this before, I played drums quite a bit, played a lot of shows with different bands, friends of mine, and uh, probably played at least 400, 450 shows. And, you know, people got enjoyment out of it, and you know, that's what essentially got me out of my shell of being shy and everything, is uh, doing that. So, I saw people getting enjoyment of, out of what I love to do, and then it turned into something a little bit bigger for a while, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's what it's about, right? So, if you're doing something that you love, and you notice other people getting out enjoyment out of it, you're going to feel a lot better about it too, so. Alright guys, that's it for this one. I am going to start the rinsing cycle of this get this all extracted out so we'll check that out and see how it goes here we are BDS crew got this all cleaning up nice give you guys a little background added on this tile bleach has been used to clean it I think a couple times at least now if you're like, hey, I do that sometimes, I want you to get on Google when you have a chance and uh, Google does bleach, discolor grout. And the reason why I'm sharing this information is because yes, it does. Depending on how much has been used, and if you're using it often, you can expect some, some color variation in your grout to uh, occur at some point or another. Other things that can cause your grout to look different in color is the top layer of the grout has came off over the course of a period of time of either normal use, a uh, bad install slash the grout wasn't mixed very well, Especially if it's degrading after a year already and hasn't even been cleaned or has been cleaned. Those are some factors to consider. Now, I wasn't really supposed to do this area, but I opened the door and looked at the threshold and, you know, I had to do a little bit at least make the spot where they stand presentable, right? So, anyways, yeah, that's, bleach can pose a problem. Uh, the, the grout not being installed right is, you know, obviously going to be a problem at some point or another. And there's always a chance that if the house is around five to ten years old or more, along with the tile, being original to the, the the building of the home, you're gonna probably notice some hairline cracks if the concrete subfloor or slab settled or has cracks in it. Sometimes it eventually makes its way up, causing the tile to shift or a crack to form in your tile floors. So, those are all things that can cause problems with the grout or tile. Discolorations, wrong products being used on the floor naturally it can cause issues, just like putting bleach on carpet, trying to get a stain out. It's gonna, it's gonna bleach the color out.
So I think the key in any service industry is to educate when possible so that way everybody can benefit. You know, things get used and if nobody tells you or the product says it's okay to use but doesn't specify how much you should be using or if it should only be a one-time occurrence just to fix a, a small issue, then, you know, false advertisement can, can cost somebody money and obviously we don't want that with any product that we purchase, you know, because when we think of those big box uh, cleaning supply companies, you know, we want them to be effective, right? That's why we buy them. We feel like they're supposed to be getting spots out or whatever for us or cleaning the surface we're working on. But not all of them specify, or if they do, it's in super fine print that it needs to be rinsed out or it's only safe on these, these surfaces, so on and so forth. So just be cautious, look over the products, make sure it's a good fit for what surface you're planning on using on. And if you're unsure if any of those products are gonna do good for you or if you've had issues after using those products, whoever your cleaner is, let them know. Because if they have information on products that have been used in your house, they'll be able to better serve you and hopefully use the right chemistry to fix uh, any potential problems or you know even if it's as little as a coffee spill if you're like oh you're too embarrassed to say that you dropped a, a cup of coffee and that you know so on and so forth it's better to just let them know accidents happen we're all guilty I'm guilty of it even I spill in my house, so it's just more frustrating to me because I know what it takes to get spots out sometimes, so things like that happen. So don't be shy. Let your cleaner know because they'll be able to do a better job for you knowing what's in the carpet, what's on the tile, so on and so forth. And they'll be able to hopefully give you some, some best practices for your normal day-to-day -day cleanup so you can maintain your beautiful floors and, and keep them looking pristine for as long as possible. So that's what I wanted to share. As you can see, this floor is cleaning up really well. There are some grout variations. I noticed there's some, some lower ends or lower sections in the grout. That's what I'm talking about is some top layer of the grout coming off. You get to a point where you start to see the mortar beneath and it will be darker and look different in a lot of cases. So like this one where the left side of my wand is sitting over, you can kind of see a little darker. The grout dips down right there a little. So it's just missing some of the top layer. So here's what I'm talking about. You see that crack leading from the edge right here? It stops about right there. That happens. Sometimes the concrete subfloor gets poured poorly, and that can happen too from, from what uh, I've been taught in, in the past. So there's a lot of things that can tie into it. It's not always that it's still dirty. There are cases where sometimes that happens and that's, you know, that's on the cleaner, but there's a lot of things that play in the tile cleaning. And if you're ever wondering why tile cleaning is a little, a little more expensive to do than carpet cleaning, then that's part of it. There's, there's a lot more to look out for a bit more risk in the end when it comes to cleaning tile up. 
some of the products can be a little more expensive too. But nonetheless, that's pretty much it that I can think of for this this topic on this this job. So I'm gonna go around the other side here shortly and to get this other area. You'll see like right here in front of this desk. I mean it's natural for these areas to look a little different in certain drought areas, lines and whatnot. I always do at least two passes over just to be sure that everything's coming off and if it's slowly coming off naturally I go a couple extra more just to see if it's a low point in the grout, some of the grout's missing or whatever the case may be. some dry back back passes a bit here but before I finish the carpet out or the whole job out I should say um, they're having me seal the, the grout so I want to make sure it's clean and dry before I do that so I will be drying this out with the wand and then put a blower on it to get the rest of it. So alright guys, that's it for the tile part. Next up after this is going to be the carpet section. And then if everything shapes up the way I think it will, and I'll be finishing out the rest of the carpet. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see what happens on the next part. If I get a good clean carpet out of this, I'll add it into the video. And hopefully post this as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. See you later. Alright guys, doing my sample test here of the carpet. To show them that I'm able to get it clean for them. So what I want you guys to do is down in the comments... I want to know what you think is going to happen based on what you see here. So right about where my finger's pointing is the edge of where I vacuumed and pre-sprayed so far. So you can kind of tell, boom, up to there where I vacuumed. And I'm doing this section here right off that tile. As you can see, it's pretty bad. So, and then right where the CRB's back blue brush is sitting is about how far back I went. So I'm just doing the first like two steps or two feet. And then where these spots were over here, I figured the first two feet is perfect right off a hard surface so they can see how the need of it is gonna benefit them instead of changing the carpet out. So what do you think? Put it down in the car comments below right now. I wanna know, do you think it's gonna shape up? You think it's going to clean and look look better? I think it's going to clean. I know that. But is it going to look better? Am I going to be able to salvage it based on what you guys see here? I want to get you guys involved in this. Tell me what you think below. All right. It's had a decent amount of dwell time. Not a lot, but a decent amount. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started and see what I could do for them. So you can probably tell from the tile that the tile needed some love and it shaped up pretty good. I mean, it's not 100% dry yet, but it's very close to the ceiling point. 
so that's why I chose to do this section because I can go around the other side over here and seal the grout before I actually block myself out by doing the carpet cleaning. So like I said, before I even got started, look at the difference it makes already, just CRB and free spray. I fully believed that I could make it look better to save them money and be able to better plan for when they're actually ready to replace the carpet or put a different floor in. But I wanted to know your thoughts down below. And of course, I still got to rinse it out, so who knows what the end result's going to be, right? I mean, I do. At this point, I have a good idea. And I was confident already because of the tools that I have and the cleaners I have allows me to have that confidence. And of course, me knowing how much effort I'm going to put into it to, to win the client over and show them that it, it's worth saving and that I'm worth having them do the clean. So I'm doing a little extra scrub action here so I can talk to you guys about it, but yeah. So that's it. All right, guys. I'm gonna go turn on my, my rinsing agent get this rinsed out and see how it looks all right moment of truth So one thing you guys got to consider for those who are cleaners, you're probably thinking, man, this is a lot of effort to land a, uh, a carpet job. You know, and it's not the biggest one either. But here's what you got to think about. You got to think about long term, bigger picture. What do you think the average client is worth to you at the end of the day you know while this job may only be a couple hundred bucks or you may only be you know at a job that's your minimum charge and you're like man i could be doing something much bigger than this right now but the thing is if that's your mindset you're not going to land the bigger ones and like I've spoke about in the past, and you guys, if you've been watching for a while, have seen, this happened to me through a minimum charge job. Minimum charge, living room and a hallway. It was one of my minimum charge jobs, and after that job, I landed 13 locations cleaning H&R blocks. Because somebody came home and was ecstatic with how the carpet's shaped up. And they just so happened to be in the middle of taking a look at getting a new cleaner for those locations. And I only, I did 13 out of, I believe, the 18 that they have because five of them didn't need it at the time. So I earned 18 because I'm gonna be doing them after tax season, 18 brand new accounts based off of a minimum charge job. So the value that I got out of that is massive, right? So with this job, I may or may not have something like that happen, but if you're in the mindset of something like that coming to you, 
being positive and going for it, the client's gonna notice. And you may earn a client for life just in this home and any of their other homes that they move to if they're still in your area at that point. But you never know who they know, right? You don't know until you know. So, and this guy, I feel has connections somehow because if I'm not mistaken, he's a retired sheriff of many years. So, when he sees how good this carpet came out, how good his tile came out, do you think he's gonna be more inclined to tell somebody about it than the me just to come in here and be like, oh yeah, I can clean that for you. And then how confident is he gonna be in your work or even his wife, because I spoke to both of them. So it's all about delivering value to the client. I'm already here doing stuff for them. I'm pretty much done with it. I'm just waiting, waiting for uh, the tile to dry out over here a little more, which is pretty much there. But I'm just doing a little extra dry strokes here while I talk to you guys so you have something to, something to watch and not just here. So, with that being said, what do you guys think? Think I'm gonna get the job? What is this? I'll oh, treat that with some degreaser. Go back over that. Something that's right on the top of the fiber. Can you see it? Right beneath my thumb. Do you think I'm gonna earn it? Look at that transitional difference. Those stains are gone over here. So I'm gonna send this guy a picture and show him what I got out. I think he's going to be happy that he's not going to have to replace his carpet as soon as he was thinking. So, all right, guys, I'm going to get that picture sent. And see what he says. All right, you guys, I'll see you in a bit. All right. So, I just finished pre-spraying the carpet. And... I uh, deleted what files I could. I've literally got seven minutes and 11 seconds of space according to my phone that I can record. So what I'm gonna do is just tell you that and then I'm gonna go ahead and stop it until I am ready to start rinsing out so I could sh show you at least a little bit outside of that little section I I tested for them so without further ado we'll s jump to that here shortly oh yeah a little bit of kick out running the CRV over here Gotta love that. All right. Got five or so minutes that I can film before I run out of space. But this carpet is shaping up wonderfully. Like, when you're trying to win somebody over by doing a test clean, and the carpet just cleans up magically, gosh, it's even better. Uh, you may not be able to see it, but there's 
there was, I should say, more so, some pinkish spots. treated this area a little extra because of those spots and then just going a little slower a couple, few extra passes over it because it's slowly taking it out it's just about gone I do not know what it originated from my only guess is it could be one of those oil plug-in scent things Sometimes those are really difficult to get out. Usually it's the color that sticks around. But not this time. Just a few little dots right here. And we're out. Sweet. So if you watched the previous video or previous portion of the video, uh, depending on how long this actually is at the moment, you'll see how the tile is starting to look. The seal in this area is starting to dry out, so the normal color is starting to pop through. So that's exciting to see. At not every job do I get to see it drying out and looking its natural color again. That's always good to see, so I know without a shadow of a doubt that it's going to look fantastic when the client comes home and sees it. Just some grout gets darker when it's wet, and that's normal. So I'm about to have to shut it off here, or it's going to automatically do it itself. So we're nearing the end of my, my memory stick here. Um, I do have one on order for more space. So that way I don't have to worry about this. Well, for a while, I should say. So thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate your support. We're at, I think, 353 or so subscribers last time I looked. We're getting closer and closer to those to uh, 400 and then we're on our track to hit a thousand so let's keep doing what you're doing. Please share subscribe and hit the bell button if you haven't trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the time end of April hits. It's one of my goals this year. If you guys can help me, I'd greatly appreciate it. I'm going to keep pumping this content out so that way you guys can see it's worth it. So I'll talk to you later. It's about to shut off. So you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you again for all the support. BDS crew, you're great.